Now drifting back two seasons past to late in 86, where hopes are high in Speedy Creek in small town Prairie Hicks, their team returned to them at last, a strange eclectic mix. A driven man with guts and sight ignored the public polls to bring the team to his hometown, a windy city stall. The run of history, big and small, is rarely bound by rule. They've gathered guys from many leagues, from western farms and towns, to share a room and miles of road with mates just lately found, in big sky land whose light reveals horizons with no bounds. This town that bathed them, call it home, out on the sunburned plain, the hat, the jaw and pile of bones right flank on either twain, oasis in the empty hills, in land near parched of rain where men of soil still plow the ground to plant their shafts of gold, and red-faced live their rugged lives in ranges hot and cold, and work to live the same again for sons when they grow old. But summers, with their searing heat and moisture leaking wind, are weak compared to winter freeze that forces men within, and hardy folk don't venture out with lowly odds to win. Man will have his victory time, say water holding dikes, or blow a mountain here and there to gird the earth in spikes. But this turf lies in nature's state, she marches here with pikes. She slashes at the swaying crop with early clean frost, or swoops up in her swirling rage, rich soil grown free and lost. Her tenant farmers must each year weigh gain against the cost. And out here knocked stands in the way, that man might know his God, where night drives past the city glow, still light away on flood, where thoughts of never-ending life seem slightly less a fraud. And safe where music rocks the room as players prep to play, some guys unknown but weeks before share toil and strain each day, and long the bonds and team they form will last until mid-May. This is a place for hope to spring for each man and for all, where quest for greatness and for fame peers out from every stall, and none of them knows which of them will rise and which will fall. On fire now, one red of hair, a scorer's touch and true, an athlete skilled in many sports, whose gifts are for the few, while waiting home his almost pride has wedding plans to do. His friend through all is next to him, exception to the rule. That size is all that counts in sport, he takes big men to school. A hometown son of German stock, no battle shakes his cool. And never far a sheepish guy to watch out for the lambs. He'd made the squad with guts and fists and saving skill from jams. And wary is a league of him of thundering his hands. The future star from Hockey's clan, heir worthy to the throne, his easy wit and friendly smile have made his essence known, with all the extra practice time he's come into his own. The last few games for Christmas break saw more and more success, their spirits high from time at home and loved ones soft caress, they take to ice the second half determined to impress. The sound of laughter fills the room while cities loudly blare. They pack their bags and chirp their buds, the quiet are not spared. The pads seem very far away, there's time left to prepare. While outside winter's gathered force, with New Year's two days hence, the blowing wind and rain to snow might make some travelers tense. But these are western guys and tough, no cause for such suspense. And who can know what place to sit, or which bus they should take? And who can know if sleep is safe, or best to stay awake? Or how a young enchanted boy is dealt his lucky break? They talk and joke, lay out their beds, or jostle their best mate. Whatever thoughts are on their minds, none are about their fate, and four with cards in right rear seats, each holds an ace and eight. For this bus carries one more guest, 
though no one knows at first. So dark and brooding he lays low until the awful curse. Tis then he stands to raise his scythe and beckon forth his hearse. The road which has been sure till now is icy on the curve. The driver tries to stay the slide and precious lives preserve. But fear now stalks the iron lung and brave men lose their nerve. The ditch comes quick amidst the screams and brings a brief reprieve, but fast appears a side road spank that gives the bus a heave, and then another awful thud that mutes impassioned pleas. In all the glass and mangled mess, the bus groans on its side, while dull moans rise to calls for help, and young men sob and cry for shattered dreams and injured friends, for innocence that's died. And oh, that ghastly, piercing voice that tells of further dread, these shaken lads with haunted eyes now hang their sickened heads, and tears fall down a coach's cheek, his friend and nephew dead. But this is not enough for death, he's taken three more lives, these four who live with no farewell, who never will know wives, four men whose loved ones cannot sleep, nor teammates who survived. Pale warriors, death pale are they, in land where no birds sing, for this death doth have victory that brings most grievous sting. Come, let us lie upon this ground with tales of death and kings. O oh God, where were you on that day? Your name was called in vain. What other things meant more to you than loss with no regain? No trophy won in any sport can take away such pain. Where brooks and broncos brush against and run the open plain, where the Cree a la verandre preceded John A.'s train, the wind erases marker stakes and life's so shallow claim. <laughs>